Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What accident happened in a sleepover that ruined the sleepover? At my brother's sleepover party, he and his best friend convinced another kid that their pee, the two of them each took a turn filling the cup, was apple juice and got the kid to drink. Kid's mom came and took him home and my mom flipped out at my brother. My wife's older sister and that sister's friend were chasing each other around the house when they were around 10 years old. They were running in a circle set up where you go from a door off the kitchen into the yard and back through a sliding glass door to the living room. Friend was chasing sister and sister slammed the sliding glass door shut. This was the 80s and the house was old by then so this was not safety glass. Friend ran full speed into the glass door, going straight through the glass. Story goes, it was as bad as you would expect without any fatalities, with massive bleeding and hospital dash. I can't imagine being either parent on the end of that phone call. We were like 14, and my friend had a decorative battle axe hanging on his wall, like the kind of thing you'd see in Skyrim. One of the more aggressive kids was bullying slash teasing one of the others, swinging the axe just a little too close in order to scare him. The kid getting teased instinctively put his hand up to block, and got sliced right between his finger joints. He was bleeding profusely, had to be rushed to the emergency room, and we all had to go home. When we were growing up, one of our close friends at the time had to wear diapers because of a car crash that left him totally incontinent. We knew about it and it was fine, I mean it wasn't his fault some drunk idiot left him with a disability. Our friend group was really close, so we were used to his accidents and had sleepovers all the time. Well, one night, something did not sit well with him because around 2 in the morning, we all woke up to the smell of death. Poor kid had absolutely unleashed everything in his body so bad that it spilled out onto my bed. We were all gauging and trying hard not to upset him over it, but it was just too bad. I think the combination of embarrassment and the sheer scale of the mess sent him over the edge though, he ran out to call his mom to come pick him up while the rest of us had to evacuate my room. My mom was passed out drunk by this point. So I had to gather my sheets and take them to the laundry room while my three other friends picked spots out in the living room to crash. I told him he was able to take a shower while he waited for his mom, but he was too upset and just waited outside in that horrid squalor. We didn't see him for a few days after that, but then everything went back to normal. We never brought it up at any other sleepovers, but I'm sure it was always on his mind. We drifted apart over the years, but I hope he's doing well. Former classmate died while hosting a sleepover, age 18 to 19. He had a heart transplant while a young child, pre-10. I guess it caught up to him and his time came one night. He had three to four friends over for the night and when everyone woke the next morning, he didn't. I was not in attendance. Friend has a mouse running around his attic bedroom. One kid decided to throw his dad's pocket knife he borrowed at it, and sliced open another kid's neck when he threw it, completely missed the mouse. My friend and I went for a walk in the woods with his Jack Russell Terrier. Every time I was around his dog, my eyes would itch, so I figured I must have been mildly allergic to his dog. After about an hour in the woods, we made our way back to his house. We got inside, did the usual upstate New York check yourself for ticks, and sat down to play video games. Within about five minutes of me being in the house, my friend looks at me and says something along the lines of dude what is good with your eyes. So I go into the bathroom and look my eyes are almost swollen shut. It turns out that on our excursion I had touched poison ivy and when we got to the house my eyes started itching from the dog and I rubbed my eyes. It was horrible. My dad picked me up immediately. Sleepover equals ruined. Not me, but a friend's friend who was having a sleepover with his friend. Dude shat himself while he was sleeping, woke up while his friend was still asleep and wiped his ass on the sheets and left the scene. Me, 10, 
and two of my cousins, 11, 13, had a sleepover. We were playing hide and seek tag in the house. My older cousin was chasing my younger cousin. When my younger cousin stepped on a toothpick, while running. It went through the bottom of his foot. It pushed the top of his foot skin up like a tent. It was buried so deep you could no longer see the toothpick. That immediately stopped that and both my cousins had to go to the emergency room. I'll never forget that. My friend's pet turtles froze to death. They had got them about two weeks before we had a sleepover and got mad because I told them that I hoped they had the right supplies for them. They thought you could just put them in a tub of water with no heat lamp. Sand or foliage. It was the middle of winter and they didn't have good heating. They died and had been dead for a few hours while we were having drinks and playing cards. And they didn't even bury them. They threw them in the trash. I did not stay the night for many years to come. Haha <laughs> <laughs> in elementary school I got invited to my crush's house, and while it wasn't a sleepover we were hanging all day. She gave me a lifesaver, hard round candy, but I thought it was the gummy ones, the brand had different kinds. Didn't like the flavor so I tried to swallow it whole. Started choking on it and her older sister had to do the Heimlich maneuver on me to which I spewed the candy and a glup of esophageal mucus the size of a slice of bread all over her kitchen floor. I think I died of embarrassment and never spoke to her again, I literally don't know what happened after that cause I was so flustered. I had a sleepover for my birthday. Several girlfriends were sleeping over. We woke up and one of my friends, the shy quiet one, bless her heart, was gone. Vanished from her sleeping bag. There was also a mysterious dried substance on my nest friend's sleeping bag. She said what's this? And scrapes and picks it off. Turns out it was vomit. There was vomit everywhere. My mom had to take her home in the middle of the night because she woke up and threw up all over herself. She tried to cover her mouth so she had it all over her hands. She went up the stairs to get to the bathroom and touched the walls the whole way up. When she got to the bathroom she wiped her face on the hand towel and I'll never forget the perfect face print that was left in vomit. A real work of art. The real tragedy is my mom had to clean it all up in the middle of the night after driving her home. If you're out there, Madeline, I hope it doesn't haunt you. A male friend of mine got entirely too drunk and started bawling about a girl we both knew that wouldn't give him the time of day. The entire group of us ended up sleeping on the living room floor without pillows or blankets, while listening to the host and his girlfriend fucking all night. The same guy that was upset got up twice in the middle of the night to pee on the carpet about four feet from my head. I never slept over after a big party again. This wasn't an accident but my friend and I built a blanket fort under her desk and fell asleep in it. Around 2 am her stepdad came into the room, opened the fort and threw a glass of ice water all over us yelling, you're supposed to be in bed. Stop trying to hide from me. Then he saw me, took a few steps back, and apologized and told us to go to bed. I was only 9 or 10 and didn't understand what that was all about. My friend was scared and made me promise not to tell anyone, and since I didn't understand what was really happening, I kept my promise. I'm 32 now and I regret not telling my parents about it at the time. My great grandma had just passed on my mom's side and I was 8. Me and my two cousins were spending the night at my grandma's house, her mom was the one that passed away. My grandma had four kids all there for the funeral it what happened but my uncle pushed my aunt through a screen door, not drunk or on drugs, and lost his shit. Needless to say my grandpa was beyond pissed that anyone would act this way at a time where we were about to lay someone to rest. In fourth grade, my friend was supposed to sleep over. I lived in an apartment building and my apartment was on the second floor, and my grandparents lived on the first floor. My grandma often picked me up from school at around 3 and my parents would come home at around 5, so I'd chill for a few hours until my parents got home. Well, school day ends, 
Me and my best friend are super excited to have the sleepover. We get to my grandma's apartment and I tell her we're going to have to wait a bit for my parents. This is when shit starts to go down. We were talking for a while in the living room, doing fourth grade things, and then out of nowhere. She drops to the ground and starts shaking. I'm like oh no, she's having a seizure or something wrong oh. She then sits up very straight and pretends to not know who I am. And then pretends to be possessed. She starts trying to hit me, and is talking in this voice that's super cringy thinking back on it, but I was absolutely terrified. She ended up hitting me and scratching me a few times and I was just worriedly saying haha, name, please stop, it's not funny anymore. My grandma heard the weird ass noises she was making and my sad pleas for her to stop, and called me to the kitchen. I told her everything that happened and my grandma called my friend's grandma and told her she needed to pick her up right now. I didn't go back into the living room where this all happened. Then this girl had the nerve to walk into the kitchen and ask what was wrong and why was I upset. Hated her. She turned out to be very manipulative and terrible as a human in general. Cut her off in fifth grade or so. I was around eight yo, and tripped in the dark falling through a window. A shard of glass stabbed into my leg about 1-2 inches deep, but would have gone deeper were it not for the burglar bars. A blood-soaked trip to hospital spoiled the mood a bit. Like 10 years old at slightly younger next door neighbor girls. Wake up in the morning to find out period started overnight. Not very first, but I had nothing with me, neighbor girl hadn't started yet and her mom was gone to work. I didn't want to explain periods on chance neighbor had not learned of them, I was well aware I started hella young. Trying to figure out a way to leave early I ended up being kinda rude. <laughs> Slept over at a friend's house around 10 years old and we shared a queen bed. Woke up in the middle of the night and the friend had pissed, found out after this was common for him, the bed and moved to the floor but failed to wake and tell me. I rolled to the spot and woke up because of the cold wetness on my side. I went to the washroom to wash up and the floor was soaking wet when I walked in in the dark. I turned on the light to discover his drunk dad had pissed all over the floor. I couldn't get out of there fast enough in the morning. My friends went out to Denmark to drink when they were 16 to 17. They invited some girls over and things were getting steamy between two couples. My closest friend the only one without a girl to kiss, was way too drunk and falls down from one of the bunk beds, p. Ukes all over the first couple and then walks over to the other couple and pukes over them too. The most legendary cock block. Still don't know if he did it on purpose or if it was an accident. He has zero memories from that night except that he was drinking two bottles of wine and that everyone was trying to give him water, which he didn't understand cause he thought he was drinking Kool-Aid. He has done a similar thing when I was making out with a friend during a sleepover. Except that he didn't puke all over us but got really drunk in another room and came back upset. Didn't understand his behavior until years later when he told me that he had a huge crush on me and was sad that he didn't have the balls to flirt with me. This was for a birthday. So the birthday boy was supposed to bring us blankets and pillows so we could sleep for the night, and went to get them with his girlfriend. He obviously never came back and like 5 minutes later we start hearing them fucking. It's fine, we'll sleep on the floor. Then two girls start puking their guts out, one in the bathroom sink and one just outside the door. I'm the most sober out of anyone, don't want to ruin the happy couple's moment, basically I spent the night cleaning up after drunk people and making sure they didn't kill each other or themselves. Yeah fun night. When I was 7 years old, I went to sleep over at a friend's house. The day was a bit strange. We had played outside all day, then decided to take a shower together in our bathing suits. She accidentally pooped in the shower while I was turned the other way. I was beyond grossed out, but she claimed her stomach hurt and she couldn't help it. Sure, okay, I was 7 so whatever. Later that night, I had finished getting ready for bed, 
and I was getting ready to lay down, we were sleeping in her bed, she pulled back the covers to show me that she was totally nude, and told me she wanted me to sleep nude too. I immediately left the room and had her mom call my mom to pick me up. Luckily I only lived about 10 houses down the street. Somehow, I never saw her again. This was not the last time I'd have a friend try something sexual with me in elementary school. Watch your young kids. I slept over at my friend's house the night before they were heading on vacation because I was going to watch their dogs for them. About an hour into the sleepover another friend came with a suitcase and stuff a little weird but then my friend said are you excited about the trip? She replied yes, I don't think I was supposed to hear that and it made me realize I was being used because I've been there for this person forever and never realized I was only invited to things if she needed something from me. I was in middle school sleeping over at a friend's house when the worst pain of my life stared in my abdomen. I thought my appendix burst or I don't know what. I woke their mom up and she drove me home instead of to the hospital. To make a long story short it turns out that I was just constipated. I'm still friends with the family over a decade later, and trust me they still remember that night very clearly. Pretty embarrassing. Don't know if it was an accident but I had a sleepover at a friend's house where they had many pets and I developed a cough after that which my parents assumed were allergy. However, as an adult I'm pretty sure that was the first incident of my nervous cough. I have noticed that when traumatic or stressful things happen to me, I cough a lot. The truth is that I was petrified at sleeping over at my friend's house. Her mom wasn't very nice and we weren't allowed to sleep with the lights on which was very important to me. My friend was also abusive to me and would often drag me around with an arm around my neck or beat me up if I told her no. She pretty much always asserted dominance over me and humiliated me every chance she got. At another point it was her turn to sleep over at my place. I woke up in the morning and she wasn't anywhere to be seen. My parent told me that she had woken them up at night and cried about wanting her mommy and they had driven her home. I remember feeling incredibly angry with her for doing that when she always mocked me for being weak and a pussy. However, I had pulled my shit together and endured the sleepover at her place and I was really disappointed she hadn't been willing to do the same for me. We were somewhere between 7 and 9 at the time. As an adult I understand that she was dealing with some difficult shit and among others, she took it out on me. I don't know where she is today, but I hope she's doing well and that she's happier as an adult than she was as a child. Drunk driving accident took out a classmate that everyone knew. We were up all night betting on pool and getting drunk on shitty wine and in the middle of that someone called in saying a girl we all knew was in a wreck with a drunk driver. I was probably 16 or so and a couple years younger than most of the party goers. She was in their grade and was among several deaths throughout HS where I knew the sibling much better than the one who died. It always happened to someone everyone would miss a lot, and usually involved them driving. This is one of the many reasons I slowed down and started driving more conscientiously. My friend was playing with my younger brother, who was about 3 or 4 at the time. She was chasing him around the house and she pushed him a little too hard and he fell face first on the corner of our brick fireplace. This was so many years ago. But it still brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. He had a huge gash in his forehead and while we were in the car taking him to the hospital I remember his little voice asking my mom if his eyeball was in. My god. That was the most horrific night of my life. But he was able to get stitches and was all fine. He just turned 19 last month. Around age 10, I had a friend on the block who had every nerf gun you could imagine. He even had the purple nerf crossbow that fired these huge yellow darts. All the kids on the street are sleeping over at his place and naturally we plan a house-wide nerf war. My friend is running down the stairs and I raise up the crossbow to shoot him. As soon as I fire, he slips backwards siding down the last few steps putting his eye level with this massive yellow dart I fired at him. His screams of pain ended the nerf war pretty quickly. Everyone got sent home and I was never allowed over to their house again. 
I am not sure how bad I injured him, I just know he had to wear an eye patch for a few months and started wearing glasses all the time after. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.